countdown. <laughs> like that. <clears throat> Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Boundary Breakers. Everyone, I'd like to introduce you to our very first um, interviewer that we've had here on our show, and his name is John Ferry. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so going back, this is our 12th episode now, and John was our very first here on the show, and we talked about- And apparently about the second highest viewed of all 12 interviews. Which is true. <laughs> so a very paramount first episode, I'd say. But we talked a little bit about what it means to be an artist in society today. And what we'd like to get deeper into is how this can have an effect on young artists and what it's like to be an artist today. And we really want to uncover some of the, you know, just experience and perspectives that John has for being an artist and a member of society um, longer than young artists have. Um, so tune in. We've got a great episode planned today. Um, and we'd really like to exhibit the new um, showcase you're unleashing, John. Could you tell the oh, thank audience you. a little bit about that? Uh, the show opens tomorrow and it's called Frosted Flakes. And um, I'm, I'm, you know, the title of the show is absolutely means nothing um it's just the, the the next collection as you you know get some momentum in your career you start having exhibitions and it becomes this group of paintings and that group of paintings so it's really just a title um <clears throat> and i look at what happened to an artist like jeff coons who was using a lot of uh mickey mouse images disney sued him and won um but his prices you know quadrupled because yeah. of that so you can kind of look at something about like and go oh well i'm sure kellogg's isn't too upset about me using their um thing the last show i, I had a show a year ago called fruit loops <clears throat> the last show was called active scrubbing and i used uh, joy dishwashing detergent um <laughs> you know, there's there's plenty of you know Doug Copeland and uh, Keith Haring and and uh, uh, Andy Warhol used you know Campbell soup cans. I mean to 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 market their work and that kind of yeah. thing. So I'm not painting frosted flakes. It's all paintings of Vancouver, um, which I love. So and luckily enough, I have a gallery space in my building. So I'd be um, showing there at the 350 East Second Avenue. The show's at six o'clock. It's free, and uh, come as you are and bring a friend and come see some cool art. So. You know, that's uh, kind of how that's rolling. <clears throat> you heard it here, everybody. If you're looking to get involved more and just see some local art in Vancouver and you're around, go check out the exhibit. Um, well, I put your phone down. Put your phone yeah. down and come and see some art. I mean, I, I went to a play the other night and I thought, isn't this lovely to sit in a theater and watch these wonderful actors who have sacrificed their life for being, you know, on stage to watch their skill in front of me. Um, and, and you know, no phones, no nothing. There won't be a, a test. There won't be anything. But, you know, I would say to any artist out there, go and see as much work as you can, whether it's done in a little coffee shop or, you know, an artist studio or the Eastside Culture Crawl or a big time gallery. Go and see these, these shows. Go and see work that's out there. See what's selling. Um, you know, I, I had the privilege of going to see Ross Penhall. Um, I think there's a two year waiting list to get a, to buy a Ross Penhall painting these days. But, you know, I, I went and saw his beautiful paintings and, and probably three quarters of the collection had sold um, prices starting at $12,000. I was, I was wowed by the whole thing, um, which was really something. So, you know, and, and, and other artists I'll go and see it's done in a little, a little chocolate shop or something where I'm like, Oh, oh cool. There's some artwork. Um, go and see as much as you can. It's, it's, it's important, especially when you're a young artist struggling to get your career off the ground. And you know that there's something so novel about doing something and participating in something live. I know for all the artists, performers, whoever, talented folk out there, there's nothing like being in a play. It's like so fun to learn and be a part of it, but also to perform and show it to people who are there live. It, there's, I feel like we are slowly moving away from this um interconnected aspect especially after covid so it's really important to really take that opportunity when you can and go see something in your town yeah go go see a show 
and and even if it's you know not to your liking um you know everyone's your teacher you'll you'll learn something uh, by by seeing something other than it being on netflix or you know on your instagram page or whatever um you know it's it's important to go and see something and you're actually supporting the arts by buying a ticket and going to see a show um and and you know it's funny because this particular show was about uh a theater in Poland in 1939, 1839, um, doing a fellow. And I just thought, oh God, shoot me now. I don't <laughs> want to go. But it was it was absolutely riveting. And and most of that was because of the caliber of the performances were so high. Um, you know, even seeing the quality of the work. And I sought out one of the actors in the show because he was so captivating and and so incredible to look at um you know it was really something and and you know i i often think god you know who the hell am i um and yet when you approach these people they're like oh wow well you're you're john ferry of course i'd like to meet you i'm like M me <laughs> um so i'm 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 shocked by that um so you know because i'm you know i'm just a fan like everybody else yeah, but then at the end of the day, everyone is just a fan, whether it's just a short um, interaction in public or whatnot. You never know who's actually paying attention to you. Um, so, you know, that's another um, aspect on why it's so important to network and get yourself out there, uh, because you never know where that interaction will take you, right? Oh, God, no. Um, um, you know, everyone is your teacher and and you you never know. I, I'm just flashing back on a instructor I had in art school um, who used to read from the Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance with a thick German accent. And on any given day, I was literally planning this man's death. I, I absolutely loathed everything about him as an instructor. I, I, I felt I learned nothing. I came out of the class barely passing. And yet to this day, I draw on his teachings more than any other instructor I had combined in art school. It's like Obi-Wan Kenobi, the voice comes into yeah. my, into my voice and I'm like, Oh my God. And there it is. And think about this. And, and I was having, I, I remember he was just saying to me one time, don't just draw a hand, draw the space between the hand. And, and that is so paramount in my work as I'm, uh, ad, apply that. But at the time, I swear to God, I, I, absolutely loathe everything about this instructor um but i learn more from him than anybody so you 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 never know it could and that was easily well i graduated from art school in 1988 so do the math on that one it's been a few years um so i really love that though and you know um criticism is always going to be more um, useful than just positive feedback because it'll make you reflect on what you've done well, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, everyone's going to have an opinion. Um, if you if you really just want people to like your work, then don't ask them. Um, mm -hmm. If you if you if you really are curious about what someone might say, and you know, I, I I'm sorry to say, I, I'm a I'm I'm a little bit of an expert. I'm also really <laughs> good at critiquing. I'm really good at critiquing people's work. I'm 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 good at looking at it, and I will I will lead an artist to their strengths. I I truly will. Um, but if you really want me to love it, then then you know, don't ask me because I I will tell you, and I will ask artists. Are, are you sure you want to hear what I say? Because uh, you know, I'm not going to tell you to go and take up golf, but I'm I'm going to tell you where your strengths are and where a piece is falling apart for me um and at the end of the day it's just my opinion who cares um and and that's all there's to it but so many artists are so sensitive because they yeah. put so much work into it there's so much time into it they thought so much about it and it's really it's just the way it reads um and and that's all there's to it or it's about something really really deeply emotional and i'm just like yeah but that's your thing not yeah. not mine necessarily um and you wonder about why does an artist have to explain their work the explanation should be in the work um it would be like asking a writer to do some drawings about the story they just wrote um you know why does an artist yeah. have to write about what it is they've written and i know plenty of artists that don't do artist statements um and they just say the work speaks for itself and i think there's something really um, something artists should step up to more 
the the work is my statement um and and love it or hate it or whatever oh now that you've explained it oh now that makes sense you yeah. know I'm like, you know why should that have to be the way it reads and the way work resonates with one person isn't going to be the same as somebody else um but these are things that young artists i wish would you know, realize when they're putting their work out there that 90% of the population is not going to like their work. Of the 10% left over, only 5% can afford it. Um, so, and and it's the last thing people buy. It is the last thing yeah. people buy. And work can change as well. Um, you know, I had a woman contact me. I had done a painting of Gassy Jack in Gastown. Mm -hmm. And since the, I did that series, um, it was deemed that Gassy Jack was not a good person of the community. The sculpture has been removed from um, Gastown. And I guess this woman was was very, very affected and her family was affected by this painting. And then she wanted to return it to me. And I'm just sort of going, well, you know, I, I, I'm intrigued by what you're saying, but you loved it when you bought it yeah. because it's politically changed now mm -hmm. wasn't my intention when I painted it and it wasn't the way it was going to roll um and no I'm not buying the painting back sorry to say um and and I shouldn't have to so um but yeah everyone's going to have a reaction to your work and sometimes that reaction changes too so uh, you know what else can you do yeah and I think that's a good lesson but I think this um, trying to put words to an art form is definitely an issue that we're having as a society. Because if the observer needs to see or, you know, read about an abstract or something that it's about, it's it's like they weren't able to get anything from the piece itself. That's like, um, I always grew up uh, dancing and teaching dance, and you're supposed to tell a story through the yeah. performance. And whether that affects person A and person B and person C differently, it's the fact that they're being affected. So if they're not mm -hmm. able to understand anything from your performance, that means you need to go back and rethink what you put on the table. Yeah, it's it's funny because I, I love going to dance and I love watching dance performances and I love seeing a dancer where you know that they've spent 10,000 hours being able to do that grand should day across the across the stage and and it's really quite something uh absolutely beautiful um but it's also the type of thing where I don't technically know what I'm looking at uh yeah. sin comes with going to the symphony I haven't got a clue what I'm listening to yeah. but I just let the music you know sink over me and I think about my art work and i think about you know those kind of things as well um but you know going to your point about having to explain your work and what really bothers me is i love when an artist starts out and they've learned their craft and they learn to do landscapes and maybe some portraiture along the way and they do all these things and then later on in their career they go to the abstract where this means this and this means that and whatever you get from it but what kind of pisses me off is that a lot of artists start out with abstracts mm -hmm. because all they have to do is squirt some paint on the canvas, smear it around and go, oh, look, it's my abstract. And and it's abstract one or abstract two. Yeah. Um, and and I, I, I've seen artists that actually get picked up by a gallery um, and you sort of say, oh, well, what's your work about? Oh, it's abstract. Like you started painting three months ago and you're in a gallery already it drives me out of my mind because you don't have to explain it you don't have to say anything you can just say oh it's my abstract it just drives me out of my mind um as you know this work person was a, a photographer before that and then they were a writer before that and then they were a chef before that and now they're a painter um and they're actually getting recognition for work that is not trained at all um and you know i can sniff that work out from a mile yeah. away but a lot of people can't um so i don't know i mean it 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 kind of annoys me because there's still and we talked about this earlier is there's still that then perception that as long as an artist is signed by a gallery then therefore they are a, a success um and i don't necessarily think that's true i think an artist is a success because they do their work um, and they work at it every day. And I'm lucky as an artist because I can work every day and I do work every day and I make sure I work every day because I can, if that yeah. makes any sense. Because there's going to be a, come a time in life when you, I can't.
That's yeah. all there is to it. I mean, I think it was Gordon Smith at a hundred years old that stopped painting by the time he was a hundred, uh, um, you know, and, and justifiably so. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm weird about some things when it comes to work. And yet I do love being able to go and seeing another artist's craft just displayed in front of me and, and whether it's singing or voice or acting or dancing, um, I do enjoy seeing things like that. Yeah, me too. And, you know, to go a little bit deeper into this issue, I want to ask what strategies you would give to young artists that are looking to, you know, spice up their careers, like either by joining galleries or however else they're finding success, but keeping and maintaining that artistic integrity. Well, um, you know, having artistic integrity is a real double-edged sword sometimes because you can have integrity, you know, up the yin-yang, but when you're doing your 26-foot by 18-foot paintings with your integrity, um, not everybody has room for that. Um, and not everybody's going to buy those giant paintings that, you know, you think are so wonderful. Um, I, I look at what artists are doing when they're coming along, you know, I live in Vancouver. I know not a lot of people have room for a, you know, six foot by four foot painting. That's yeah. all there is to it. If somebody wants to commission that, then perfectly fine. Um, and I can work with that. I can do paintings of any size, which is which is really great. But I know Vancouver is the land of the 800 square foot condo. And, yeah. um, you know, they're pie shaped <laughs> with glass. And there's about that much room for artwork. So I make sure I've got paintings that will fit into those into environments those spaces, and, yeah. you know, and fit into their car, into their yeah. Uber that's going to drive the painting back to their home um, and hang it on the wall. So, you know, everything in my new collection, for example, is 36 inches by 36 inches because that's a Vancouver size. Um, also very sh reasonable for shipping as well, because, you know, people are paranoid about shipping a painting. And I'm like, hey, no, nope, easy peasy. It's all under a hundred bucks. There you go. And, and, and that makes it doable. Um, you know, I see my work from one end to the other. That means I stretch my own canvases. I, 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 I don't make my own paint, but I certainly mix the colors together, yeah. um, paint my work, show it, exhibit it, sell it. And then I will bring the painting over and I'll put the nail on the wall and hang it for you. Um, yeah. you know, that's seeing the work from one end to the other. It sounds so strange to me, but some people have an anxiety about, um, about putting a nail on the wall and where do I put it and how do I put the nail in and what angle do I go in and oh my god is the painting going to sit there will it fall off the nail when I do it it's just like I, I it's astounding to me because I just think it's such a simple thing but yeah. for a lot of people it's not I a, a client bought a painting a few months ago and it was a smaller piece um but I didn't put a wire on the back because it's just okay. smaller and it was perfectly light and easily hang on the frame well she she just couldn't wrap around you know getting a wire on the piece herself i'm like oh no problem at all i mean i will send you a wire no problem at all put the screws in here hang the piece and you know give it a tug and and enjoy um but what i take for granted when it comes to um my artwork for some people yeah. is a real anxiety and that's why people have things like interior designers and architects yeah. so that can be done for them oh my god where do i buy a lamp and what do i do with it and you know how do i turn it on i mean these are these are ridiculous things because people want to be approved because they're they're coming along with something it's good it's good right you like it it's good yeah it's good um it's it's almost like buying a, a woman buying a dress they want to hear the accolades before they'll step out the door wearing it and that's all there is to it and all the marketing and promotion of your work at the end of the day won't make a bit of difference if your work isn't good um you know if you're if your butt doesn't look good in those jeans when you put them on all the marketing and advertising behind it isn't going to do you any good yeah um so, you know, I, I, I take my hat off to anybody who's out there showing their work and getting their work out there. But I had a woman the other day message me on Instagram and she was very, very kind and very sweet. But she goes, John, I want to quit my job. I want to be a full time artist just like you um, and market and promote my work and be a rich and famous artist. So I'm like, oh, well, you know, don't we all? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm no dummy. I'm 62 years old. I've been in my career for the last 40 years. I still keep a waitering job to make sure I've got rent in the bank 
because you never know when a painting is going to sell yeah. or not sell. And one thing I've learned the hard way is don't get excited until the check clears your account um, and the money's there. Uh, it's it's That's one of the things that will suck the life out of you is chasing money. It is the most awful thing in the world. You got to sell like you don't need the money, but guess what? I need the money. Um, <laughs> so I this woman approached me and she was, she had some, some nice stuff. Um, but she wanted to quit her job and be a full-time artist. And, you know, how does that happen? And, you know, when can I be rich and famous and blah, 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 blah. And I'm going, well, you know, she was a young girl. She was very sweet, but her work was not strong enough. I didn't think, um, I said, you, first of all, you need to photograph your work in better lighting environment. Cause it had all this, you know, flash bulbs all over it. Yeah. Um, I couldn't even tell what the work was really like. And I said, quite frankly, you shouldn't quit your job. Um, you know, until you have a gallery paying you $5,000 a month, you know, to make sure you've got everything covered. Um, you know, it, it, it really isn't the, the way to roll. And you know, the next thing you know, I'm at an event. I, I'm, one of my paintings was up for auction. This woman came up to me and she goes, I'm the mother of the woman you wrote this letter to. And she goes, oh. thank God, somebody set my daughter straight about being an artist in this day and age and what you're supposed to do. And she just thought you were this rich, famous artist lying around, you know, with artwork flying out the door and can barely keep up with it. And I'm like, not necessarily. No, yeah. <laughs> there, are, there are days like that. I mean, I sold the painting to a client. She was putting it in her car outside. And I guess in traffic, a woman said, hey, where'd you get that painting from? She goes, John Ferry studio right here well the buzzer rang and i thought it was a woman forgot something i buzzed the person in i opened my door who the hell are you i said to this strange woman she goes i'm here to buy some artwork i'm like well come right in so she bought two paintings which was really something but that doesn't happen every day yeah. you know, believe me um and if it looks too good to be true it is um you know i i, I changed it every lead I have and and I follow up with every single person and I'm a, a good guy and do I do I like these phone calls no do I do them yes um do they work out all the time no um and that's all there's to it but you learn to hone your skills as well you will learn that you know if you really overselling something or come off as really desperate they can blow it um or you're too aggressive about uh making a sale it'll you can blow it and and you know not every things can be home run and and things are subject to approval by 10 15 other people um it, it's 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 a bit of a wait you want the answer by the end of the day you want the check by the end of the day we all we know we all want that um but you know you have to have some patience when it comes to these things so you know i don't know what i'm trying to say you know in the long run but i've learned what's right for me the hard way and and you know sometimes guess what? Don't put it in writing. Get screwed. Wait three months later. What do we figure out? There's a huge falling out. Oh my God, what do I do wrong? Well, you didn't put it in writing to begin with. And that's where the misunderstanding came in. Um, and, and people will say all sorts of things, you know, at a dinner party over a glass of wine. Oh my God, I'd love to get this painting. Oh, I'd love to, you know, put me down for that painting. Well, you know, there you are three weeks later trying to collect the money from it. And, and it's, it's not, it's not happening. Yeah. Um, it's it's very difficult. Realize also that art is a luxury item. Mm -hmm. It's the last thing people buy. And yeah, yeah, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy it. Well, the visa bill came in, you know, and, and OK, well, there you go. And then they can't do it. But they don't want to, you know, lose face and say they didn't, you know, can't afford it now and that kind of thing. It just, you know, it it, it happens. And and that's the the way it rolls. And and I see some artists that are coming along. I have a, a lovely artist that I, I do work with. And, you know, the pieces are upwards of, you know, three and four thousand dollars. Well, great. You know, if you can get that price, awesome. But to me, I always think you go over two grand, you're competing with a Louis Vuitton bag. And we live in a day where those types of status items are paramount in people's lives. Um, you know. Do they want the bag? Do they want the painting? You know, like they really want both. But if they had to choose, they usually take yeah. the bag. Um, I'm sorry to say. And, and you know, keeping your prices reasonable, it's me not getting my work um, is not sitting on the floor of my studio. Um, you know, artists will phone me and say, oh, there's an opportunity to do this show. It's in a little gallery space. It's not very busy. But I'm like, hey, look, it's work not on the floor of your studio. 
um, there'll be some eyes on that work. You know, if you go into it saying, well, I've got to make $10,000 or it's not worth my while. Well, you might be disappointed, yeah. but I, I'd rather see my work hanging somewhere and not be on the floor of my studio. Um, which I think is a way better way to roll um, and put some price tags on it, whatever, you know, it can be, be a great thing. But this girl that I keep referring back to worked in a coffee shop. And I said to her, look, you know, it's, it's, it's not a job you probably want for the rest of your life, but do it really, really, really well. And, and show that you've got great integrity with your job, no matter what you're doing. And if you're sweeping the floor of a, of a gas station, then at least you're doing it well. You never know. And maybe after a few months, you've proven yourself to be good to this, this owner that owns this coffee shop. They might let you put your paintings on the wall mm -hmm. when you're done. And people come in, who did the artwork? Well, the artist is right here. Isn't that wonderful? Um, and I think that's when you get ahead. I mean, look, I showed in every single hair salon, coffee shop and restaurant I could get my hands on because I couldn't find a gallery that would touch my work. Yeah. Um, and and I all I kept hearing was, John Ferry, I see your work everywhere because I would be in five and six different places at one time just to get my work out there. And I think that's, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and, and, you know, just having your work with eyes passing by it is a very good thing. Now I've, I've been with, you know, gallery, uh, restaurant, the restaurant went bankrupt with my, my artwork in it. Um, and having to go to the sheriff and say, look, there's price tags on the work. It's not part of the, you know, thing. And oh my God, you know, and, <laughs> you know, and the sheriff opening the door, you got three minutes to get your work. <laughs> there's the lowest moment of my life. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it was all part of the, the, the learning, you know, the learning curve. Um, so uh, anyway, I, I, I really like this young artist and I thought she would do really well, but you know, you've got to realize it's 10,000 hours before anyone's going to even remember your name um, and, and want a piece of your work. W what I'm hearing, not necessarily all the time, but not, Oh, I like that painting. It's, Oh, you have a John Ferry, you know, the, the brand is being built. It yeah. doesn't happen overnight. I'm just, I'm currently watching um, the documentary on Steve Martin, the, the stand up comic. My God, that guy did some awful stuff. It was <laughs> awful, awful. Cracking the joke. How can you tell when, a, when well, I'll turn myself into a midget? Everybody close their eyes. And he takes the microphone and scoops it up four feet. Okay, open your eyes. I mean, dumbest joke in the world. But he is now one of the funniest people in the world, you know, making millions and millions of dollars in a movie, um, you know, and branded as being this great comedian. He wasn't always that funny. Yeah. Um, trying to trying to get people laugh, laugh at me, laugh with me, laugh at him, just laugh um, is not the easiest thing in the world to do. Neither is artwork, you know, and, and not everyone's going to respond to it. But there's also this weird DNA that we have where... Artists seem to think as long as you get signed by a gallery, the contract of fame and fortune comes along with it. Not, 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 not the case, um, unfortunately. And you, you sign with a gallery and say, oh, great, you know, I've got this exclusive contract with this gallery and I'm so excited and I'm, yay, finally I've made it. Well, six months later, you can't give your mother a painting for her birthday without the gallery taking their cut. Yeah. You can't give a painting to a charity without the gallery deciding that this is the charity that they want to give to, because they've got their charities that they want to market and tag your work to as well. You know, I donated a painting, a woman phoned me the other day, and she does a fundraiser for women with HIV on the Lower East Side, and they supply diapers for their babies. And she was so sweet and so kind. And would you have something, John, just the smallest piece in the world would make all the difference in the world to us. And I'm like, I'm going to give you a huge painting because this is the kindest approach to somebody that's ever given to me she phoned me the next day and she said john your painting sold for such a good amount we can supply diapers for two years and i thought wow isn't that awesome and it was just this little fundraiser they had in a little coffee shop and i really felt like i made a difference but i couldn't do that if i was with a gallery i would have had to have their approval first and and you know that can be a real double-edged sword and i i did this because i felt like it 
Um, you know, I'm doing, I just did the children's hospital Christmas cards, which I do every year uh, for the children's hospital. And it's something I really like to do. I'd have to have the galleries approval first. And, and there you are sitting there waiting for a gallery to say yes or no. So I'll go you one further. The gallery decides you're perfect to be part of our corral of artists. You're so lovely and dynamic and talented. Well, our work changes. That's what artists do. Our work changes. And all of a sudden you bring this new breath of fresh air in that you think you're so excited about. 20 new paintings from my new works and everything else. And the gallery sits there going, oh gosh, you know, as much as we love this new work, we have orders for what you did a year ago. Um, could you could you paint a little bit more like you did back then? Because that's that's where we're that's where we're at with you. Because you know what an artist is doing and what they're known for is usually about a year apart. Um, and an artist will suddenly go more abstract, for example, or just do something they saw. They went to a trip to Bali or something, and they're influenced by that. Um, then a gallery starts dictating what they know will sell. And they're in a business. Artists, you know, a gallery is a stepping stone between the artist and the buyer. But is that the answer necessarily? So the artist is like, well, of course, I want to eat and I want to pay my rent and do all these things. So then they are they do start painting like the gallery said. And maybe they didn't do it enough or maybe they didn't do it right. <clears throat> but you turn in a half a dozen paintings to the gallery six months later they're all still sitting on the floor yeah and it's like yeah but i thought you said you could sell them yeah, yeah. no not, not not yet well who's who's happy then and and does an artist know whether to you know stand on their head and spit nickels um what do they do now because mm -hmm. the gallery's saying what's selling you know what you want to do but it's like okay well now it's different and, and it's whack-a-mole because you're trying yeah. to hit what you think a gallery can sell for you um so i don't know and i was at a an opening a couple of months ago with a, a hot artist that i've been following for the last 40 years um wow. and there and there are 250 artists in the gallery mm. 250 you're part That's of this huge you know you know database of of artists and it's like wow okay i mean you know some of them were were hot um most of them i'd never heard of before yeah. and 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 but you're part of this corral that you're under exclusivity you can't give anything to anybody you can't sell to anybody else um you know if somebody phones you up and says i'd like to buy this painting great go through my gallery um you know i i was showing in a cafe one time and a a woman messaged me and she goes, John, I love that painting. I love it more than anything. I know you want this amount of money from, but I only have this, which is about $200 less than the price of the painting. And I remember thinking, Jesus, I'm, I'm, I'm short on my rent tomorrow. <laughs> you know, you bet, you bet I'm going to take that money. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not saying this is something I recommend, but is being with a gallery the answer for some artists it is. Um, and they do really well and they make lots of money and the gallery pays them everything and they drive around on a Porsche. Ugh, you know, I, I, I don't see that a lot. A um, couple of artists are like that, um, where they're showing all the time and everything's red dotted and there's a wait list and blah, blah, blah. And you have to be a approved, approved buyer to even go to the exhibition. I, I mean, yeah. those artists are, you know, it cracks me up. With those artists. Um, but they've, it's funny because I've met those artists and I, I talk with them. And I'm like, you just are like Teflon. Everything just seems to have like, are you kidding me? They've all got battle scars too. They've all got, you know, you know, things that haven't gone well. And, 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 you know, it, it's not all been smooth sailing, um, but you, you think it is. <laughs> is there a question coming in at all? There is. So oh, cool. I was wondering how you recommend for young artists out there to effectively showcase and you know make a name for themselves without having to rely on that gallery representation first things first i would say to any artist have 25 paintings bang good ready to go 25 solid good paintings these aren't works in progress these aren't works that are happening this isn't this direction this isn't that direction 
25 cohesive paintings that show an arc of the artist's work and what their work is about. A few varieties in size, shape, color, um, but a through line with what they're communicating. 25 good ones. Um, not I'm going to wait for a gallery to sign me and then I'll make this artwork. And as soon as I get that government grant, I'm going to, you know, crank out all these paintings. Um, the artist should be painting every single day and showing their journey of their work, uh, drawings, sketches, um, hang on, but 25 good paintings ready to go. So if a client even walks in the door to buy one painting, they'll see the journey that an artist has been on. And I think that's very important for artists to, to realize that people don't want just that painting. They want to see where you went or came from uh, along the way. So that would be one way for sure. Um, because I mean, I, I trust me, I, I know a lot of artists and I listen to them and they're, you know, one artist one day was telling me he was waiting to hear for that government grant. I'm like, oh, yeah, the government grant that you applied for eight months ago. Really? Yeah. You're still waiting for that. And yet you've done the square root of nothing, uh, waiting for the Canadian government to tell you you can be an artist. I mean, it just makes the it makes my steam come out of my head. Yeah. Um, and it's and it's funny also because. It's been my experience with artists that get grants, the caliber of the work drops. There's something about an artist, the, the guts and the grit and the, um, you know, blood, sweat and tears that really makes great artwork. It, it's artists that suddenly have a little bit of money and the work just goes like that. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's just me. So I don't know. And I think that, that might be true with a number of things with the Canada Council that they, you know, there's some great work out there as well. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's not all of it, but, but some of it is, um, but you've got to come from a point of view that this will be for the betterment of the country for you to get a little $5,000 project grant. Yeah. <laughs> um, the money, the money's out there. Don't get me wrong. The money is out there. Um, but anyway, that's sort of coming full circle. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, that tells us a little bit about your journey. And I'd like to delve a little deeper into that and learning from your experience. So when you were just starting out as a young artist, what is a anecdote that you learned from a mistake early in your career? And what did you learn from it? And how did it change how you went about your art? Well, I mean, one of the things I learned sort of the hard way is if it looks too good to be true, it is, um, you know, and, and that can be really challenging. Look, it's not a career of battle scars and bumps along the road and that kind of thing. Um, and I don't want to paint this picture that, that it was a any way a negative experience, because to me, it's all part of a journey and everyone is your teacher. Um you can learn things as you go along. And what was right for me isn't necessarily right for a different artist. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I would say put it in writing was something I learned the hard way. Um, you know, six months later, what did we say? What happened here? You said you'd send me this. You know, chasing money down is such a degrading, awful experience. I don't let paintings out of my studio without being paid now. That's all there is to it. Um, you know, and, and, you know, three months later, you know, gosh, darn it, you know, I'd really like that check you said you wrote me and sent to me that I never got. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it can, it can infuriate you after a while and, and chasing money down is just not something I'm going to do anymore in my life. So I don't let paintings leave my studio without being paid. It's as simple as that. And in this yeah. day and age with, with e-transfer and all these things, it can happen right there on your phone in two seconds flat. It's, it's really no big deal. Um, you know, there were just some things that I, that occurred that I, I wish I had put in writing, but it, I didn't. And that was part of the good lesson to learn was, was, oh boy, you know, that was, that was a good thing. Good way to learn it was to not do that. Um, there have been some phenomenally wonderful, influential people in my career that I just met as, as I went along and, and, and uh, you know, that were so lovely and kind and friendly to me um, that escalated my work, uh, elevated my work, I should say, to a higher level because they approved it, if, if that makes any sense. That was, yeah. that was really something wonderful that, that, that people that I just met along the way that elevated my work and, and made sure that I had the validity uh, behind what I was saying that I was doing. Um, 
that part I really liked uh, as well. You know, you've got to find those people. Gosh, darn it. Give me their names. I'll give them a call. Um, you know, you, you never know who, yeah. who that person might be. Um, you know, I don't think you'd be anywhere in this world unless you've donated to some some part of the community, um, really doing some great stuff you know, there, uh, you know, showing my work in the lobby of the Stanley Theater on Granville Street was a great way to people because there's a thousand people a day going through the lobby that would see my work. Well, you know, if two of them say there's John Ferry, wow, you know, I think that I think that I'm ahead. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think that, you know, just giving back to the community is really important. I, I sort of uh, came along during the AIDS crisis where, you know, AIDS was at its absolute worst of its worst. I thought I've really got to step up here and do something to help people. Um, and, and, you know, did all the images for AIDS Vancouver, for example, um, those springboarded around the world as Vancouver hosted the international AIDS conference. Um, you know, I, um, those were important things to me, but boy, oh boy, you know, you bet my signature was on all those pieces that I did. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think that can be a, a good thing for people as well to know that, you know, it's not necessarily all about you. It's what you can do. Um, my, my work is very bright and bold and colorful. So it reads well. And, you know, there's always a good positive message behind my work. Look, and if you want to do work about your demons and your you know nightmares you know wow gosh darn it more power to you but you know if you want people to respond to your work boy, yeah. oh boy it's gonna and be that's pretty it's, niche i think uh, like yeah want to have demons and nightmares on your wall you know in your bedroom and whatnot some people do some people do yeah um, it's, you know it's I, definitely some people i taste. don't <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and trust me, I have weird artwork all over my house. I have weird, weird, weird stuff all over my house because I love it. And I love the artist and that's all that matters. And it's my pieces and I have to live with it. And, and um, you know, I have a piece done by an artist and it happens to be a silhouette of a gun. Um, okay. And I love it because it's so well made. And the message behind it to me reads really well. But other people are offended by it. Oh, gun control yeah. and all these things and the hotbed issue of guns. Well, you know, you know, it doesn't all have to be anti-gun. I mean, we're all anti-gun, uh, um, but this piece was so beautifully done. But that's just me, you know, and that's that's all there is to it. Um, people will want a piece of you. Um, and, you know, I, 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 I just lost both my parents uh, in the last last year. And I was doing lots of writing in my journal about how sad I was and everything else. But when it came to my work, I remember thinking nobody's going to want to, you know, me, you know, have a piece about my poor dying parents, um, even though, you know, what comes to define me as being an artist at the end of the day, I could paint my tears and paint my fears. But yeah. my work reads really bright and colorful and, and happy, I hope, um, you know, and that's all there's to it. Uh, you know, it's it's like being it's like a fashion model. You know, nobody wants to hear about your troubles, you know, put the dress yeah. on and, and sell it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, having just watched uh, the Naomi Campbell and Cindy Crawford and Linda Evangelista documentary, which I was such a fan of, um, you know, look at those drop dead gorgeous women. But, you know, they, they had a life, too. Um, yeah. And, and, and not everything is smooth sailing. And that's that's for sure. Um, but when it comes to presenting who you are, um, you know, uh, I've, people want to remember you for being a good, kind happy, cheery person. I've got an exuberance about me. So, um, you know, and, and, and I've had some bumps along the way, believe me. Uh, um, and it's, it's just the thing, but you wonder, what did I learn from that? What did I get from that? How could I have done it differently? And how can I make sure that doesn't happen again? Um, can be all part of the journey. That's, that's all there is to it. Yeah, completely. And you know, those bumps along the way, they're inevitable and you learn so much from them. So I wanted to hear your perspective on how you can turn setbacks into opportunities, whether for growth, learning or success or just for development. Uh, it's like a person's in your life for a season, a reason or a lifetime. Um, not everybody's going to be there for the rest of your life. Not everybody's there because, you know, you're the greatest thing in the whole wide world. And my father had a great saying that a lot of friends can be a lot of trouble. Um, and, and I, I think everybody can attest to that. 
there's there's going to be a bump along the way. That's all there is to it. But no matter what, the an artist has the ability to go into their studio and make some more artwork. And um, okay, that piece didn't sell. That piece didn't work out. That piece, you know, me, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, uh, um, you know, I hate to think of anything ending up in a lawsuit, but they certainly happen. Um, you know, you can you can no matter what, you can always make more uh which is a which is a really great thing i mean i had a <laughs> i showed it an exhibition one time and the piece got stolen and i'm like well oh, no gosh, you know well gosh you know if somebody if somebody loves my work that much they're gonna steal it you know i'm like okay uh, <laughs> you know, i can make i can always make more i mean it's it's you know we're we're squeezing tube paint out of a tube and smearing it on a canvas with yeah. a brush i mean it's 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 not exactly you know a rocket science and and you know no one's gonna die over it um so i think that we can you know just put a period and move on if you're going to sit there and dwell on something and and you know be miserable about something or let it end you um maybe this isn't the career for you yeah. um you know i'm, I'm currently out of, out of some god unknown reason uh dialed into ramsey's kitchen nightmares uh, gordon ramsey on tv and showing all the nightmare restaurants and you know watching the owner crying through the entire episode i'm like honey you're, you're in the wrong industry like, yeah god. you know you're you're as good as your last shift and you got to do it all again the next day. Uh, pull up your pantyhose, you know, put some lipstick on, take a shot of scotch and, you know, lights, camera, action. The doors are open the next day. You can't drag everything with you yeah. through the next day. Um, you know, you've got to put a period and move on. Nobody wants to hear your troubles. Nobody wants to hear about your, your, your nightmare experience and that kind of thing. It wasn't right for you. Oh, well. Don't do it again and move on. Yeah. What is the definition of insanity? You know, doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Yeah. Um, you know, th these are the things, though. I mean, I, I want to say to artists sometimes, smarten up. Smarten up. Stop doing that. Um, and, and uh, you know, and if they don't want to hear it, then don't come crying to me with your problems. Um, uh, I, I, I hope that makes sense without being too negative or anything like that. But there's just a certain point where you've just got to go, hey, I, I hit the dead end on that one one too many times. Now I'm foolish for going back for more. Um, and, and we've all seen that personally and professionally with people, um, you know, looking for a different result, having done something one too many times. Uh, <clears throat> take it as a learning experience and move on. It's it's that's all there. It's like, and if you're not, not prepared to learn something with everything you do, then <clears throat> good lord, don't don't be an artist. <laughs> yeah, and you know those tips are the most useful ones too. Um, and you know you just have to take everything either with a grain of salt or a big bucket of salt. If you find that that feedback <laughs> is useful, then take it. If you think it's not useful, then don't. And you know um at the end of the day you just you got to move on and keep going like you were saying with uh that lady who was running that um restaurant you're gonna have to show up the next day so you do it all again tomorrow over it. yeah you're as yeah. good as your last as your last piece um that's all there is to it i mean there was there was an, a certain person in vancouver that was trying to market artist work and i'm like great you know and she liked me and thought okay come with me i'll make you you know everything else but every time i looked at something she, that was on Instagram Yeah, was all pictures of her. And I'm going, okay. okay, well, if you look over the shoulder on the back corner, you see a little easel and there's a sliver corner that I'm pretty sure is my painting, but I'm going, where's my stuff? You know, like I wasn't trying to make it all about me. Um, but I found that every time I turned around, it was something like hoops, that. several hoops put up where i've got to show up and bring easels and artwork and set up and you know crawling into these god-awful spaces and you know all for the sake of marketing your work you know and i'm going okay already um you know and i i gave it a year and and i'm going it led to the square root of nothing um and to the point where they said they were having an art exhibition in a lobby of this building. Well, I happen to know the person who was, you know, owned that building. And I messaged him and said, oh, I guess I'll see you Friday at this event. And they're like, what event? I'm like, the event that's in your building. Isn't that right? And they're like, no. 
Um, and sure enough, you know, it was just a great big scam. And I'm going, well, what at what point are you going to come true and forward about this? And oh, no. messaged her and I said, I know the owner of that building and there's nothing going on on Friday at noon. Uh, oh, yes, due to unforeseen circumstances, the event on Friday is now canceled. Uh, postponed for another day and I'm like oh my god okay that's enough of that you know we're done um you know and and more power to you for for certainly trying but I'm not doing anything more with you that's yeah. that's it um but I gave it a year you know and that's all there's to it wish them well wish you separate ways you know that's all there's to it but put a period and move on yeah. Um, it's as simple as that. I mean, be, de be decisive about something um, and realize that you've, you've done everything you've, you've tried to do, it led to nothing, um, and that's all there is to it. And those are very good people to, to know because, you know, you meet somebody else like that. Hey, that reminds me of that person. Yeah, like, okay. So tell you what, you come pick the paintings up, you come and take care of them, you show them, let's see what you do with them, let's see what happens, and we'll take it from there. And I'm not doing it twice if I if, yeah. I, if I don't see anything happen from it. You know, it, those are the types of things that you, you learn that skill from, and you learn that, you get that sixth sense of, you know, God, the hair in the back of your neck stands up, and the prickliness that comes over you and you know it feels like that thing that happened before um and and you know it, it, there's something about those instincts that are telling you you know this is the way it's the way it is and maybe you should listen to it um and just because it's just not right for you don't you don't have to go bandwagoning grabbing everybody and blah 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 come with me no this isn't right just hey you know you don't have to big, make a big fuss and fanfare about it it just isn't right for you. And that's all there is to it. Um, so, um, you know, see what you can do with that. Is there another question somewhere in there? Yeah. So I, I think like you, questions. I think you perfectly um, analyzed that. Um, so uh, I think that that was really useful. And you have so much experience in both this, you know, just aspect of what it is to be an artist but also in your artistic experience since you went to art school and you have like over 40 years of experience actually in this career um people really want to see you in action and hear a little bit about what you're thinking about in your creative process so i see that you have a painting behind you um would you be able to give us a little um taste of what it is while you're painting finish off that piece whatnot yeah yeah i can do that uh, this is um the last piece in my new collection uh which is called frosted flakes which i'm so excited about uh, i'm not sure if you can see it very well or not let me get a better angle on it it's a painting of the landscape bridge i happen to work at the tea house restaurant in stanley park so i pass by this beautiful bridge every single day and um so this is a bit of a bigger piece it's 42 inches by 42 inches so there's two big pieces in this collection the rest of the pieces are all 36 by 36 i find a photograph i usually work from a photograph and i take a photograph and then i work from there i take the photograph and i draw it up in my sketchbook so i kind of remove myself from it i don't I can't draw straight lines, so I don't. And um, I let everything just become relaxed. And that's the only way to describe it. The work is relaxed. Okay. Um, and then I let it just unravel. And I start with the with the sky and the background because it's very important to me. Um, I find that, for heaven's sakes, blue paintings sell better than green ones. Um, okay. So if you've got a beautiful blue sky background, people seem to love it. So because I paint Vancouver and I paint nature, having a blue sky helps to sell the work. Very doable, okay, let's, too. Let's, let's, let's go with that for a little while and see what happens with that. Or suddenly those nighttime paintings and everybody likes the sparkle of the stars and that kind of thing. Well, let's paint that for a little while. And I go with it because, you know, I just sort of want to go be organic with what it is that I'm, I'm doing. Um so I use uh, golden paint, which is my favorite, favorite, favorite paint. There's lots of good paints out there, but golden happens to be a paint that I like and uh, respond well to it. I like the colors. I like the consistency. I like the way it unravels and that kind of thing. I cannot, for the life of me, throw out a brush. 
So yeah. I have drawers and drawers and drawers and brushes. Love this issue. I have all my ratty old brushes. I mean, look at this warlock. I mean, it's just an absolute catastrophe shape. But, but that texture. It, it makes great backgrounds. Yeah. Um, or paints a great mountain range. I mean, it's all done, you know, you're pulling paint up and, and doing that. So I've got a million little muffin tins and yogurt lids and all these little things that I work with. Um, and it just comes to the point where I just pull the paint into the areas that I want it to be in um, because that's what I want it to do. And I really like, um, you know, a good variety of color. Obviously there's, you know, 150,000 colors in here yeah. and you hit, you know, the, the rainbow on them. I love to show the hustle bustle of Vancouver. And I think that's really important when it comes to my work. Um, but you know, it's just sort of the way it rolls and a little bit more white here. Um, you know, and I, I, I paint what represents uh, the things that I want to communicate. So I like to paint cars. I like to have lots of them in here and that kind of thing. I could probably paint the car looking a little bit more realistic, but yeah. I like it when it just sort of shows this funky, cool thing where cars are flying across the Lionsgate bridge and that's all there is to it. So, um, you know, it, it is, it is what it is. And, and, and this is the work that I'm at now with my career if you followed my career over the years you'll see there's a natural progression to what i've come to and this is what defines my work um i would have like a little i used to have a little skeleton to elvis in the corner or something silly like that there's always been a whimsical quality to my work um but when you're painting icons of vancouver you have to represent it in a certain way even though you know, we know the Lionsgate Bridge doesn't go like that across the yeah. water, but I like it doing that. Um, and I think that can make it a little bit more fun. If you want a painting that looks like a photograph, um, I'm not your artist. You know, mm -hmm. that that's all there is to it. There's a whimsical quality to my work. There's a fun quality to my work. I think it's pleasing. I think that it's 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 nice to look at. I think that people respond really well to it. I've got a good following. I've got a good clientele base, you know, and people buy four or five of my paintings, you know, over the years. Um, but, you know, that's all there is to that. If you are a super high realistic um, consumer of artwork, you're not going to like my work. That's, yeah. that's all there is to it. But I think that my work is good quality. I think that because I make my own canvases and I, I use really good quality paint, I bright, you paint with bright colors. I have a variety of, of, fun images and good brush strokes and that kind of thing. There's, there's, there's quality to my work. Um, and, and that I think is really important when you're an artist as well. So, you know, I, yeah. I hope I painted it up. Enough to, to I, uh, this piece I is think, almost finished. So. I think that uh, quality is important in anything you do. And, you know, that doesn't um, lose any of its value when you're talking about art or anything like that. So I was wondering. Well, it's interesting also. I mean, I had I had a gallery, you know, that I was with one time and they said, so, John, what is the articulous quality of your work? I'm like, I'm sorry, the what? Um, you know, but it means that they don't want the work returned two years later because the pigment fell out of the painting yeah. and faded. Um, you know, the, the, the painting, the paint that I use has what's called a light fast quality to the work, uh, which is very, very high. So that means that this paint is the most highly saturated, uh, potent paint you can buy, and the painting is not going to fade. I see lots of artists using student quality paint, and then a year later, you're looking at it going, what happened That's to your painting? That's not what I bought, yeah. It faded, you know, and, and, and I can spot crappy quality paint from a mile away. Um, and I can spot really good paint from a mile away too. So I think that's important. You know, do do good quality work, and yeah. and people will respond to it. You know, we can all we all see that cheap shirt that's made and poorly made, and the seams are falling apart. You wouldn't be caught dead in it if your life depended on it. Well, but you've already bought it, so you know. And good luck returning that a year later. But people will oh. return your work if it doesn't if it doesn't uh, hold up. So um, that's all there is to that. So. Yeah, um, I think that that's super important. So to get that high quality in your work, um, when you start out, do you usually start with a sketch or do you go straight in with the paint? 
Um, it's like I said, it's, it starts with a photograph and then I do a drawing in my sketchbook and then I will draw it out on the canvas and then it's got to read the whole time. Like, is this where, <laughs> and then I get excited. I know that, that, that as, as it's coming together, I'm, I'm getting excited about it. And there's a painting that I did. I think I can pull it out here, but I wasn't, I wasn't crazy about it to begin with. And I remember thinking, isn't that a weird piece that I'm going to be doing? Where is it here? Here it is. It was a piece that I didn't want to do, if that makes any sense. But I remember thinking, yeah. well, I'm up and running. I've got my collection going here. It's going to be another piece in this collection. But is it really what I'm doing? And, and is it really working? And then as I drew it out, I went, well, all right, let's see how it rolls. And 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 if it's not happening in the first five minutes, you know, I'm really going to pull this piece. And, and it was so strange because I did it. And this has become my favorite painting in this collection um and it's right here i'll show it to you um this has become my favorite painting in the collection because i worked so beyond what i was what i knew i was doing um and i just i just absolutely loved it and, oh, and it resonated with me it. yeah and it was these wavy lines where i'm going who's gonna even like you know look at these things and i'll maybe i'll add a little more here and i often paint upside down so i'm uh not reaching across the canvas and then painting from the top down okay and i'm like i don't know if this is gonna read or not and i pulled it off the the work table and i went oh my god and every time i look at the collection because i've got it all on my on my photos in a certain collection it's my favorite painting in the show, but I, I was working way beyond what I knew and, and it doesn't always work, believe me. Yeah. Um, and I, I was, I was, I was astounded by how great it turned out and how happy I am with it. So that's yeah. my favorite painting. I really like the perspective <laughs> of it because it looks like you are looking straight into this space and you can't even yeah. imagine what's outside the screenshot. I really oh, like yeah. the perspective of it. Yeah, that's that was the whole thing. But, you know, you, you never know until you're until you're doing it. I don't you can't foresee the end of a painting until it's done. That's yeah. all there is to it. And, and you know, there's also that very fine line between, you know, finishing a painting and overworking it. Yeah. Um, and you can tell that painting sticks like a sore thumb on the wall when you see an artist collection and they realize that one painting they've either overworked it or underworked it it's just not the same as the rest and there's something weird about it and i think that's a important thing for an artist to to maintain is that through line with what it is they're communicating with their with their work you know and so so often an artist will say but that's the one i worked the hardest on I'm like yeah i know so, I can see that. Yeah. You know, like, a, like a sore thumb. It's it's not it's not ugh. um but you can you can usually tell. So, you know, that's the way that rolls. Yeah, I wanted to know what area of Vancouver that painting is of. Um, it's a, it, this is the Campy Street Bridge, and this is the famous building that has the swimming pool um, that's sticking out. From oh, yeah. Um, yeah. You go across the Campy Street Bridge into downtown. This is where um, uh, BC Place would be and, and that kind of thing. Uh, but it's this famous building. It's 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 there's a space in between. And then the swimming pool is hanging underneath. So, I love that. Um, thank you. Yeah, it's my you favorite think, piece. It's a show. good color of blue for the pool, too. <laughs> <laughs> Now I don't know how I didn't see it. Yeah. I love that color that you think. Why not? Make it pink. Because, you know, it's a swimming pool. <laughs> you know what? Um, I think that's fun to change up the colors a little bit whenever. Why not? But you're, well, you're well, where are the rules? Colors. Where are the rules? <laughs> you know. Someone will appreciate it because it's a different type of color more so than if it was a regular I think so, too. I think so, too. So I put together a couple questions that are sure. a little more, you know, whimsical like your uh, work. And, you know, okay. we'll get into some tangents in the fantastical aspect of it. Fantastical. Love that word. Okay. I know. It's an underused one, isn't it? it um, is. So I wanted to ask if you had to choose between painting exclusively with your non-dominant hand or using only condiments as your medium... Which would you pick and why? You mean like ketchup and mustard and things? And, you know, <laughs> relish, mayonnaise, chili sauce. There are That's the best there. question I've ever been asked. <laughs> you know, I mean, I would, I would be painting with my foot if I lost, <laughs> you know, both my limbs. I would be painting with my foot. Yeah. Um, and, and I, 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 
Yeah, there's there's no question. I would be I would be doing that. I mean, I you know I God knows we love ketchup and mustard and that kind of thing. But I I I would you know there was there's an artist that that paints with his foot in Kelowna because uh, he lost both his arms and and you know we we I the fact that I'm a 62 year old man and I've never been in the hospital I've never been under anesthetic I've never broken anything I've never been I've never had stitches um, is pretty astounding and yet you know you're sort of referred to as that old troll um, in the corner. I'm like having survived what I've survived and and not being affected by it is is pretty astounding. We just had COVID for God's sakes. I know. Um, a virus that wiped out people left, right and center. Um, you know, I just lost both my parents and, and that was particularly devastating. But the fact that I can still do what I do and ride my bike and, and go get groceries and do the thing that I do, I'm, pretty damn lucky um and and the risks that people take in life uh, i have i have trouble watching shows where they show people that have climbed everest but lost a limb doing so mm. <laughs> was it worth it you know oh i boast and brag that i went to everest yeah but you don't have an arm now um yeah. or you know they they say that there's 350 bodies frozen to the side of everest mountain they can't get the bodies out because they're frozen there i'm like wow was it worth it? Uh, I, I don't think so. I don't want to take those kind of risks in life. I have no desire to swim in shark infested waters and yeah. you know, off the Great Barrier Reef of Australia. Um, I have no desire to skydive. I have no desire yeah. to to parachute or anything like that. Um, you know, and more power people to more power to the people that do that, that kind of thing. Um, you know, I'm I'm I admire them for no, I don't admire them. I think they're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you think they're <laughs> Go great? Ahead. Go ahead, but don't, you know, oh, we're all going parasailing, John. You've got to come with us. No, I don't. Yes, you do. You have to. No, I don't. I, I'm, I'm a big boy. I can decide for what's right for me. Um, but the fact that I can be an artist, I can still uh, do my thing. And I can still ride my bike and I can still go to the gym and I can still eat a, a chocolate brownie if I feel like it. Um, because I can. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm very, very, very lucky. And I know there's going to be a, a day when I can't. So, you know um yeah. that's all there is to it none of us are getting out of here alive we and gotta take every day like our last and you know um and just be thankful for the time that we do have here because even if it's a very crappy day it's better than a day that you never got to have so uh every day i wake up and i go wow i'm not inside a pine box this is going to be a great day and and i don't really care what's happening because i can be an artist and i can and be people forget what that, though. yeah they do. Oh, what a shitty day. I'm like, wow, what happened? Oh, my car broke down. <laughs> oh, well, you know, that's fixable. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, where is it written that the life is going to be smooth sailing? Oh, well, you know, the, oh, I signed a contract for that. I was like, what? <laughs> you know? Oh, I should have this because I'm this, you know, I'm a good person. <laughs> it just doesn't work like that. I'm sorry to no, say. Not um, at all. And a little friend of mine is, is uh, coming along and he's about to get his driver's license. I said, listen, if you just think every single person on the road is a complete and total idiot and isn't paying attention, then you'll be okay as a driver, you know, yep. <laughs> but don't rely on them to, 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 to not run into you, um, yep. you know, drive, drive defensively. Uh, and he's true. like, Oh, that's, it's, a, you know, it's, it's sometimes those simple things from the wise old man sitting on the hill <laughs> waiting for the, to give out the answer. So, okay. What's your next question? Um, I wanted to know that if you could collaborate on a piece or a, you know, a showcase of several pieces with any historical figure alive or dead, who would it be? Why? And what would you hope to create together? Oh, my God. Um, I'm a big fan of Andy Warhol. I, I think just being around him would have been very interesting to see the the, the broad spectrum of creativity from his horrible 10 hour movies of people sleeping. But, you know, <laughs> it was, it was an art form that was unheard of at the time. I think that would be fascinating. Um, and yet he was a very, 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 very strange man and very, very religious and yet parasitical in the sense that he would go to places and just observe and click photos of people just madly and randomly not even taking a photo but just click, 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 click around the room yeah um there was something strangely absurd about that and the the absurdity of his of his existence but still there's something brilliant about what he did um 
and and everything became artwork painting with a mop and a sponge on a on a huge canvas and uh um, i think that would have been very interesting and i look at what he did for uh jean-michel basquait or did basquait redefine warhol um you know i'm a huge fan of ross penhall who's a, a vancouver artist uh i think working and collaborating with him would be really fascinating uh, um you know i think that even working with uh, you know a dance company would be very interesting painting on stage with ballet dancers that and would I think be that cool would be, i think that would be really interesting i can't you know i you know what, the world royal winnipeg ballet or something get me on stage and i'll paint with them i mean <laughs> okay um <laughs> you know i living or dead i mean you know I, I kind of live in the now. Gee, boy, yeah. oh boy, if only I'd met Michelangelo, you know, that would have made all the difference. I mean... Yeah, you could have posed for him. Had a whole sculpture. Yeah, exactly. At least <laughs> come a, out. <laughs> a fat old man series. Um, <laughs> you know, I... I um, you know, I think that we, we admire people for who we think they were, but, you know, at the end of the day, they were probably just going about their life and, you know, feeding their children and having their families and making some artwork and trying to appease the the Pope or whoever they were working with who was commissioning the work or the Medici family or, or whatever. Um, I, I just don't think that these people were sitting in this ethereal uh, state going, oh my God, the world, you know, will come to me. You know, uh, Vincent Van Gogh was mad as a hatter, um, created 250 paintings in his life, never sold a thing. Um, yeah. And now is considered one of the greatest painters that ever walked the face of the earth. But he was, he was mentally disabled um, um, or challenged anyway, I shouldn't say disabled, but he was challenged. Um, you know, I, I just think that there's, we don't know what 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 a person was really like based on what was written about them in history. Um, you know, people say they admire me. You know, well, thanks, but you don't know me. You know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> and I'm and I'm a weirdo. I'm a recluse, and I you know I, I I really do enjoy being an artist. I really I think that's one of the things you have to be okay with when you're an artist is being alone, um, which can be challenging for people. So um, you know, that's all there is to that. Well, that was a very good answer. Um, I, have, I have one more I want to ask before okay. I take us into a little bit of a game. Um, okay. Yeah, that, that'll be uh, that'll be fun. Um, but if you woke up one morning and all your paintings have come to life, which one would you <laughs> be most excited or scared to uh, be approached <laughs> with? And how would you handle the situation? Oh, I think I'd be totally thrilled to see them <laughs> up and live and moving, seeing the, the cityscape of Vancouver would be walking around in my studio. I, I would definitely interact with them and, and want to see the different angles and perspective that were happening around. Um, you know, I think that would be really exciting. I mean, what a what a great thing to have happen. I wonder if I was perhaps on LSD or something. <laughs> or something I would put something, something in my, in my coffee this morning. Um, but I think that it would be absolutely wonderful. Why not? I mean, I went to the um, Vincent Van Gogh show a couple of years ago where they had the paintings um, on projectors and they were moving around the room. And that was really something, even though it was very dizzying, I, I had vertigo because the paintings were all <laughs> doing this and they were on the floor and they'd slide around. It was, it was exciting. Um, yeah, sure. Why not? I mean, that would be, that would be totally cool. I wouldn't have a problem with that. I would be, you know, whatever, um, you know, why not? I feel like that would make such a great show. Like if that would <laughs> okay, guys, I'm doing a showcase and the the pieces were alive. Like that'd be crazy. You would you would yeah. be famous forever. I think the thing about you know the technology that we're getting in in movies and things that we're seeing these days with the CGI of of things, we're going to see things be much more interactive beyond what our, yeah. our imagination is capable of dealing with. You'll be able to walk into a painting and open the door and go into a certain area and, and that kind of thing. I, I could see that happening very easily. Hey, maybe we will get to see it. Who knows? <laughs> Why not? So the I'm going to show you a video and I want to hear what your rapid response is, but I want to give you a little bit of um, feedback first. Okay. So this artist is um, an Asian lady who is 102 years old. Jesus. And 
for uh, I know, I know. And this um, really stuck out to us because it showed that age is only a number that you can keep your mind healthy and live a long, happy life pursuing what you love and, you know, affecting those around you with that. And that there are no boundaries tied up with uh, your age well to um, some circumstances. There are always some rules that you should never break. Um, but what, what's wrong with to... breaking the rules? I mean, that's exactly. kind of the beauty of getting a little older is you can kind of break some rules and, yeah. and get away with it. Why not? So I wanted to hear um, what your rapid response was to um, this artist. And Same. I've got a little video. Are your rapid responses to this video? oh my god well i mean it's obviously magical stuff i mean you know it's 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 the mind plays tricks and and uh, that's an artist to me who spent ten thousand hours probably fifty thousand hours making their work and they know exactly what they're doing um there's a couple of flukes along the way to discover it as they're going along <laughs> but you know at the end of the day all, all they're gonna do is flip the stuff upside down and wow it's beautiful it's absolutely beautiful. And, and the fact that she's 105, you said? I mean, Jesus. 102. Uh, so Well, I mean, more power to her. And, and uh, you know, but I think by the time you're 102, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Um, and, and say, that's my art. And if you don't like it, then too bad for you. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's beautiful. And her smile as she's, you know, got this like, oh yeah, pretty darn good, huh? Um, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's pretty telling as well. I think it's beautiful stuff. Nothing wrong with it at all. I really liked all of um, the different uh, tools that she used for her. Oh, yeah, well, pouncing. Like, and, you know, and she got a shoe polish machine uh, there or something. And she's pouncing artwork on, paint on. Like, yeah. Good for her. I thought that was super cool. Um, and, you know, it really just shows, like, how different um, people's takes on art are. Like, that is so different from what you do. And then something I've recently been super interested in is the people that are doing like 3d art pieces with that really mm -hmm. thick acrylic and it's like some parts of it are like coming off and like dangling off the canvas like i think that's so cool and you know goes into that yeah i mean these, these artists that do illusionary you know work with you know 3d printers and that kind of thing i don't you know it's 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 i don't think the technology is caught up quite yet uh, to to really make it fly and there's nothing worse than seeing a piece you know a year later where it's maybe ink bending a yeah. little bit more than it should um you know but still you know uh, uh, there's there's all these technologies coming along that are much better i still think there's nothing better than a good brush and a paint and you know seeing amazing brush strokes and that kind of thing um and that is kind of magical to me but that's just me you know what the hell do i know um you know, there's artists that use all sorts of things out there that are that are, are totally happening. I, I, you know, there's found object artwork. I mean, Doug Copeland is blowing everybody away with what he finds on the beaches of Hataguay. I mean, yeah. it's like okay, I mean, these are drifted pieces that are falling into the falling from from wastelands, and and he's taking them and making them artwork. I, I think that's really something. But I see artwork 
sometimes with 3D printers, I'm going, okay, that's just, you know, it's just not quite yet, um, but it's coming, you know, and that's all there is to it, so. Yeah, exactly. Everything is, you know, evolving faster than we've ever experienced in life before. Absolutely. So only time will tell literally what is uh, to come soon. Yeah, totally. So I wanted to ask the audience to prepare any questions that they wanted to ask for you for our uh, Q&A section. And I have a couple more questions for you in the meantime. Awesome. So, you know, after all these different topics that we've had about, you know, just your experience, what you would, you know, tell young people to do. Um, so I want to hear about a piece of advice that you received that really helped you excel your career, but also your development as a person and as an artist. And could you share it with uh, all the young people out there? I met a woman one day and she was uh, an ex-prostitute and she was this lovely, elegant, very sophisticated looking woman. And, and she counseled young girls on how to get off the streets and not be a prostitute. And I said, oh my God, well, what, what, what do you tell them? And she goes, well, I tell them to keep their regulars and, and, and that, you know, just not work on the street. And I thought, isn't that words to live by? So keep your regular. That means a waitering job, a barista, um, no, mar no matter what you're doing, keep your regulars. Not everyone's going to respond to your work that quickly. It takes a while yeah. for people to come around and bend their work, their brain around what it is you're doing. You know, still doing the artwork, are you, John? Oh, yeah, yeah, great, I hate your work. Um, you know, <laughs> and, and and that's that's all there is to that. But people will come around after a while. But you got to keep your regulars. And I, I thought that was an astounding piece of artwork to do. And there's moments, believe me, when I'm standing at the restaurant in my black pants and my white shirt, my hideous green tie where I feel a bit degraded, you know, and, and, but it's also like, Hey, I am the hardest working artist in Vancouver. You know, I keep a waitering job for God's sakes. Um, you know, people, Oh my God, you're still waitering. I'm like, yeah, I have a medical plan, you know? So, you know, shut up. Um, and it's, and it's what I've, what I've done. And, you know, what do we care what other people think of us? I mean, we, I, and I used to agonize at what people thought of me. I, agonized about it oh, now they don't pay my rent I think whatever you want um you know that was that was one pretty significant piece i thought was kind of cool and i keep think your, that's keep your regulars cool too. and also i bet in your um job where you're waitering and whatnot that you have more networking opportunities than if you were just painting all day at home in your yep Space yep. because you're getting out there and talking to people yep. and obviously you have like such an attractive personality oh. so then you'd be like i also sell art would you like to see it no people say are you an actor no i'm an artist what kind of art do you do here's my card oh my god up on my instagram page i want to their phone with them here we go oh, i love this painting oh my god they're in my studio the next day yeah uh, that happens a lot i uh, feel like you would have made a great lot. actor though there's <laughs> You know, I feel like you totally could do it. <laughs> I'm a smart, a smart ass, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> following a script is so weird, though. You know, what if there like... was no script? What if they're like, John, <laughs> we have a character. Yeah, John, we want them John. to be just oh like you. Just speak it from the heart. Then would you would you take up that opportunity? Ask anyone who knows me. They will say, John, I've heard the story. And I'm like, I've added some. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love that. You know, there's always uh, the people that love telling the same story over and over again, but it is different every single time. So no, it's, I change it up. There's voices now. I, I do everything. I love that. Um, we've had a question in the audience. Um, they are asking, what is your favorite piece you've ever made? And I'm sorry, what? No, what is my what? What is your favorite piece you've ever made and why? Um... The piece that I've are always my favorites are when I've been the most emotional. Um, uh, this last collection I painted was very, very emotional, uh, having lost both my parents, um, who were always very loving and very supportive of me, and bursting into tears in the middle of a painting because I miss my parents um, has been very cathartic. Um, 
there's paintings where I've just had a breakthrough where I've gone, wow, that's really something, you know, that's a new, a new thing I'm, I'm communicating now with my work, a certain color combination that I have, haven't painted before. Suddenly I'll, I'll discover and go, wow, I really, that's, that's really something. I love it when I have a, a groundbreaking work beyond what you already know. And then the piece really works and sings. Um, and the reverse has happened as well, where I've gone, oh my God, what am I putting those colors together? What an idiot. Too much black. Everything's awful. Um, you know, which we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I think just when my emotions have been at their peak and, and uh, you know, um, breakups and love affairs and things that work out or don't work out um, has really, it's when the emotions are really, at their, their peak this last year has been very emotional so and it's you been, know, that's been when your emotions are high your muse is also high because it's consuming it is. Your, it's consuming your mind consuming your you know body yeah. i made my best um dance pieces when i was you know highly struggling with things so i think yeah. that's just when your emotions are the highest that's when you can yeah and and, and other artists enough. will say to me oh i'm in a real slump right now i'm 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 blocked right now i'm like hey go with it don't worry about it it's coming the the, the well is being re refilled like don't worry about it don't push it um yeah. it can be can be a good thing and also get off your ass and get back to work you know, yeah <laughs> saying for things that you know so many artists are like Yep, very important. Um, we have another one in the chat, and it's, what's your favorite color? And do you find yourself putting it in your painting very often? I do have favorite colors, um, but you have to be careful with them because uh, they're powerful colors, and you can overdo them so easily. And it's often not the color, but it's the color beside the color and the vibration that occurs between the two colors. How's that for the artsy-fartsiest thing you've heard all day? That um, is super and it's, artsy -fartsy. And it's, and it's also the way the brush has been manipulated the color and then the color that goes along with it that really makes it sing. Um, you know, and there's colors you've got to be careful with, like purple is a really melancholy color. Um, so I'm very, very, very careful with purple, even though I, I use it uh, quite a bit. But, um, you have to be careful with it because it yeah. really is a sad color. Um, <clears throat> every painting I've ever done is signed with red. So if that doesn't tell you something i don't know what does yeah i love the color orange, <laughs> I love the color orange as well all else fails painted orange uh it, it's um it's that kind of thing so but you know i i hit every color in the in the rainbow that's for sure you know that's a that's like the biggest standout thing about your work like even looking at the piece behind you so many different colored cars and when you talked about orange yep. I noticed the orange one and the purple in the building yeah um, and I love color myself. I wish I was, I'm wearing a purple outfit, but it's such a muted purple. I wish I wore something super bright so that I could, you know, stand up. Against yeah. I mean, we all, we all know that when you're, you're putting something on in a certain color, you go, wow, I, I just feel perky. We're stuff, alive right you know? now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there's a reason why people wear black to a funeral. Believe me. I mean, yeah. it's <laughs> what you're supposed Isn't to. That's so know. funny. And please back... don't wear black to my funeral. Wear, wear bright colors. I want to see fuchsia and yellow and chrome and all these great colors. If you put that. it in the will, everyone will be forced to <laughs> abide by it. So you think somebody would be able to find a will in the <laughs> nightmare that I live in at my studio? It looks like they're making anthrax for God's sake. You could make it's a like... morbid piece where you like paint your will and put it somewhere where they're not going to take it Oh, back. yeah, that'll sell. <laughs> <laughs> I bet someone would take it, though. Like, pe there are some people with some morbid taste out there. Well, hopefully people want a piece of you. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, you see people showing up at, you know, serial killer trials and, you to know. get their glasses. And, 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 and serving yeah. and, and, and sending love notes to them. I'm like, <laughs> you could be the next victim. My God. Yeah, yeah, maybe don't that's... do that. You'll, you'll attract the wrong oh. the wrong type of buyer. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. I also uh, wanted to ask, is there a young artist in your network that you think would be a great asset to have on our show, whether they are just starting out their career or they have amazing charisma? What Just what are your thoughts on that? Um, there's a young, uh, trans, um, transitioning graffiti artist named Chris that I'm very fond of. Um, but he, um, or she, um, um, I'm going to put this so it doesn't sound negative. Um, doesn't respond well to notoriety. 
Um, okay. It's not, and it's not at the time. It's the fallout afterwards. It's the it's the week afterwards where he's um, she goes into paranoia about the wrong thing said or attention or something like that. Okay. And, and but I'm a big fan. Like I'm a big, 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 big fan, and think they're really, really, really talented. Um, <clears throat> and I'm sorry, I'm still an old dinosaur where he, she, her, him, they is still um a bit foreign to me i'm still trying to make sure i get the vocabulary correct so i hope i'm not offending anybody out there by by saying that but this person i'm particularly fond of and you know and, it's important and, that you know you're just trying to yeah uh, but you know everybody it custom. rolls off the tongue new millennials are like oh yeah they them there are you know we it, it, it rolls off the tongue really easily and it's yeah. all very politically correct um whereas i'm just <laughs> I'm, it's i'm i'm still not there yet and and uh um yeah so it's all but i would recommend them but i i would hate to think if they would respond well to it um they'd yeah. be okay in the interview but it's the af it's the fallout afterwards if that makes any sense no, completely. Um, and you know, a lot of us regret the things that we say after we say them, but you can't take it back. So do we? Do we though? I mean, are you supposed to? Uh, I mean, I don't know. You'd think that today that you probably should, but I don't well, know. Well, I mean, we were talking earlier. You know, there, there's, there's no such thing as a meaningless joke. Someone is going to be offended by something you say out there, no matter what you say. Someone will find it offensive yeah even just having me say someone will find it offensive someone's going to be offended, be offended. by being offended yeah. by their offense um you can't please the world yeah you know you just can't um and realize also that these old dinosaurs like myself you know it just takes us a little longer to to grasp what's going on i think i've come a long way um but i'm not perfect i don't get everything i i try and get it all right or try try not to be but someone's going to be offended by something you know and and oh your work's offensive you're supposed to be perfect in this world i mean it's it's artwork it's expression that's all there is to it and yeah. maybe maybe the fact that someone's offended by something that you've done is a good thing because at least it's it strikes some kind of emotion you know good or bad i love it hate it it's offensive it's not i love it you know at least you hit something you know a button was pressed um by what you did it, that can't be a bad thing yeah. um you know um you know uh, you know, and you know I, I, but i'm right there with you and you know the only understanding that we should all as people agree upon is that nobody is perfect and you know everyone god no to, everyone's going to make mistakes step out of line and all this and stuff so and should you and so it. should yeah. you um you know those are all part of the the learning process i've never made a mistake i've never learned the hard way i've never really like, who is face this the person? music baby like who is yeah. this person we're on this we're on this spinning little ball for a brief period of time and you're dead forever i mean yeah. being making a mistake is completely human um oh my god you know you're supposed to run along in life and just be perfect all the time okay um you know i'm no, i'm most so certainly not perfect all the time <laughs> and that's all there is to it Warts no me and, neither and, yeah, it's all part of the the battle star the battle scars and and uh, uh, um, you know things along the way. I love look at the gray hair I have in my face. I <laughs> love it. I love <laughs> oh, it. Oh, kid, kid asked me the other day if I was Santa. I'm like, you're getting sweaters for the rest. of <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm like convincing my mom to keep growing out her gray. Um, she'll be fifty this year. But I, I think it looks so awesome, the streak of gray going through. It's edgy, like as if someone like put a pink streak in there. But I love it. I, I, look, I've got hair in my head. I mean, it's, it's you know, I'm, I'm lucky that I've got that at least. Considering what I did to my hair in art school, my God. Um, I, I bet so you had all the colors going. Match your, every color in the match rainbow. your hair to your paint. And my, my parents were traumatized by it. You go to art school and it's like, hi, John. <laughs> hey, that was, that's just... Uh, I think something that everyone goes through when they go to art school, new hair oh, every week. Part of the journey. Um, I wanted to ask if there was any other topics you think we didn't get to or any more last words you want to leave with our audience today before we, you know, take a picture and wrap it up. 
you know, I, I just think that artists should be allowed to be themselves and be an artist. And that that's all there is to it. And and good or bad, you know, love it, hate it. it, it it's 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 all part of a journey. Um, the artwork I was doing 20 years ago is my is not even remotely close to what I'm doing now. The artwork I'm going to be doing 20 years from now, I hope is going to be significantly different, um, you know, and and give artists a chance, give give artists a break um, and and let us, you know, express our work and 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 show and do and be and see um it's it's and be supportive of each other uh yeah don't even you know an artist gets a little bit of thunder let them let them enjoy that thunder because it doesn't come around very often and it doesn't last very long when it does um uh be supportive of each other if you see an artist struggling give them a hand if you see an artist that you admire you know praise them and and uh let ours just be and um you know that would be a better place i think i'm right there with you on that john um and you know i think that art is just such a beautiful thing like that's why that we value it so much here at love caravan and it's just such a beautiful thing and to you guys are so dedicated amazing <laughs> that's, why hey, so, that's, that's why i love you guys so much because you're, you're so dedicated that's so. our youth team and our amazing um, senior manager. But yeah, it's a shout out to every other um, person that's trying to do something in their community, whether you're an organization, an artist, someone who really cares about philanthropy. If you're trying to do something in your community, you're doing more than the most. So. Oh, God, yeah. Absolutely. All right. I'd like to pose for a little still picture to commemorate. Oops. I, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that would not make a good picture. Um, Why not? I think it's so cute. Oh, I know. It's my bitmoji I've made. I, I actually have that coat and that same hat. Of course um, you do. But I like to choose a filter that kind of goes with something that we talked about today. So I'm going to look. I feel like a French artist likes berets. So I think I'm going to do a beret and I know you're on your phone. So I don't know if you have access to this feature. I've never seen it. It's awesome. Okay. Um, I'm let's... a Luddite on a phone though. I'm like, <laughs> I, and my dad couldn't figure out what sl slide to unlock meant when he got the iPhone. So I feel like, like I'm turning into my father. <laughs> hey, we're all turning into our parents. I'm more and more like my mother every day, which, you know, yeah, as a teenager, no that would have scared me. But now I, I love it. My mom's the best person ever. <laughs> all right. So we'll have someone uh, take our photo in um, afterwards in editing. But I'm just going to smile. In absentia. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Uh, thank you, everyone who came and participated and left all those amazing comments on our episode. Thank you, John, so much. Um, it was so amazing to have you back on our show. Thank you. And we wish you the best of luck tomorrow at your showcase. And um, we hope to stay updated on that and see all the pieces. Um, Watch out on Instagram. It's all over it. Okay, yeah, everyone, we'll, we have uh, John tagged on our most recent Instagram post, but we'll uh, do another one. So please follow up and uh, go see his show tomorrow if you can. Um, and I look forward to, you know, being in touch and seeing when we can collaborate again, hopefully for Anytime. our gala that we're doing in June. But we will definitely talk more about that. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, John, and everyone who came out today. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. We'll see you in the next one. You bet. Bye. Bye.